Try to gather your awareness around the breath. Make the breath your center. Because what we're working on here is creating a center for the mind, a center from which it can act and speak, and have a sense of a good foundation. In Pali, the language of the, that the Buddha spoke, the word for the object of the mind is a support for the mind. What you want is to find a good, solid support, because when your support is solid, then you can deal with whatever is coming from at you from whatever direction, whether it's thoughts inside the mind or things people do or say from outside. Your response if it comes from a good, solid foundation, is coming from a position of strength. And when you're coming from a position of strength, you end up doing and saying and thinking things that are well thought out, that are not desperate, that are not grasping. If your center is things outside, if you're really concerned about what this person is thinking or what that person thinks of you, and trying to respond to something that's really uncertain, you're putting yourself in a very weak position. Your foundation isn't solid, and when that foundation isn't solid, then the things you do are not well-based. When I first went over to Thailand, I was teaching at Chiang Mai, and one of the things I tried to learn was Thai boxing. And all the emphasis is on your stance, the stance from which you're going to hit somebody or kick somebody. If the stance is solid, they said, then you're coming from a position of strength. This may sound a little aggressive, but it's, it's an important point when you're dealing with other people, when you're dealing with all the issues in your mind. You want to come from a good, solid position so we can deal with these things effectively. So the breath is always here. When you're at ease with your breath, when you feel comfortable with your breath, you've got a good foundation. And then when you're responding to things, okay, you're coming from a good, solid position. Your response is more precise. It's more on target. So try to practice, keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath, because it's something, this is a foundation you've got to build. It may seem artificial at first, but as you get more and more used to it, you find that it really does have a sense of being at home. This is where the mind feels at home. One of the Pali terms for a concentrated mind, Vihara Dhamma, it means just that. It's a home for the mind. a place where you feel safe, a place where you feel solid, a place where you feel protected, not only from things outside, but also from all the issues that come bubbling up inside as well. Because the big problems in life are not the events from outside, it's how you react to them. Or even, even before events come at you from outside, the things come bubbling up from within the mind. Sometimes. Anger comes up in the mind, and then you go looking for something to be angry about. It's not in response to anything, it's simply coming from the mind, and you go out and you focus on something outside that you decide you don't like, and the anger builds on that. The same with lust, the same with fear and anxiety. Sometimes the feeling comes bubbling up, and then you find that you have to find an object for that particular feeling. So it's not the case that all the problems come from outside. Most of them come from within. But the fortunate thing is that not everything inside is dangerous. You've got good qualities as well. So you want to give them a place to gather so they can gather their strength. That's why you need this foundation. Because when you're staying with the breath, on the one hand you've got mindfulness and the ability to keep something in mind. You keep reminding yourself, stay right here with the breath. 
And then there's alertness. You watch the breath as it comes in, goes out. You know what's happening. It's right there. Whether it's comfortable or not, you know that as well. If it's not comfortable, you can change. This is a process called evaluation. The basic indicator is, does the breath feel good or not? Because for the Buddha, the big issue in life is suffering. So we start with something very minor, a minor sense of discomfort that comes up in the breath. Why breathe in a way that's uncomfortable? Nobody's forcing you. It's your own lack of attention that allows the breath to get uncomfortable. So pay attention. And then learn to work with the breath, see what kind of rhythm feels good. Because when the breath goes well, it gives you strength, a sense of well-being, a sense of being nourished. around which all your other good qualities of mind can gather. And when they're gathered together, they strengthen one another. So even though it may require effort and time to learn to stay focused on the breath, it's an important skill. Because once you have the center, it's not the case that it's here only when you sit with your eyes closed. Wherever you go, there is the breath. And when you learn to relate to the breath in a good way, then you have that good relation going on inside. In other words, you learn to treat the breath with goodwill. You want the breath to be comfortable. When you find that it's not comfortable, you work to help it. That's compassion. When it is going well, you help to maintain it. That's appreciation. And when it gets to the point that's as good as you can get it, you can't get it any better than that, and you say, okay, for the time being, this is as good as it's going to get. Let's sit down and just be right here. That's equanimity. You learn to relate to your own breath in these ways. It becomes a lot easier to relate to events and people outside with the same qualities. If there's a turmoil inside, then you, the turmoil tends to affect your relationships with other people. And the way you relate to yourself inside becomes the pattern, it becomes the template for how you relate to people outside. So you want to establish a good relation in here, a good family relationship with all these good qualities, mindfulness, alertness, your discernment in telling what's comfortable and what's not, your ingenuity in figuring out ways to make things more comfortable. and the qualities of goodwill, compassion, appreciation, and equanimity. They, they play a role as well here. So when you learn to relate to the breath in these ways, with these qualities, then every time you get in touch with the breath, the qualities can be there as well. And they nurture and inform the way you're going to react to whatever comes up, wherever you are, whether it's at work or at home or between work and home, whether you're alone, whether you're with other people. When you've got this good relationship going inside, when you feel at home with all these good qualities in the mind, then you can tap into them whenever you want. So this ability to find a center, to establish a foundation in the mind, is one of the basic skills we need to be happy to be friends with ourselves. That chant just now on true friends and false friends doesn't refer just to people outside. It refers to qualities of mind. Some qualities in mind like greed, anger, and delusion, fear. Particularly greed, anger, and delusion. They're like false friends. They come in and they promise this and they promise that, but then they don't deliver. And they end up making you worse than before. Those are your false friends inside. The true friends are the ones that are really helpful like the good qualities we're trying to gather around the breath here. So you attend to them earnestly, as the chant says. Try to keep these qualities informing the way you relate to the breath. And that becomes the foundation from which you respond to things, relate to things outside. 
in all your activities. So we have a whole hour to work at this skill, the skill that you don't leave here when you when the hour is up, but you take with you. It becomes a basic way, part of how you relate to the body, how the mind relates to itself. And you find that it cuts through a lot of the unnecessary stress and frustration and unnecessary turmoil that tends to be there in the mind. So see that, look at this hour as, a, as an opportunity. Provide yourself with a center. And then after the hours go over, over it, take the center with you wherever you go. Because it's always here. The breath is the point where the mind and the body meet. And as long as you're alive, you'll have this breath right here. So if you can learn to be at home right here, you're going to have a home wherever you go. And wherever you go will be your place. Because so much of our life is spent in feeling that somehow other people have taken possession of our space. And that we need, need to depend on them to approve of us. But that's not the case here. This is your space. And when you're happy and comfortable inhabiting your space, then you're coming from a position of strength and well-being at all times. <laughs>